student from Padova University. And first of all, I would like to thank the organizer for giving me the wonderful opportunity to talk here in this event. Today, I would like to talk to you about the connection between Feynman integrals and uh, twisted intersection theory. This topic has been uh, uh, developed first by my supervisor Mastro Lia and uh, Mizera from Princeton in a seminal paper, and then uh, the whole group of which I'm part of from Padova joined them with other two works. You can see us uh, in a picture on the right hand side. Before going into the detail, let me give a brief uh, motivation and introduction on why it can be interesting to study Feynman integrals. So as we know, the standard model has been uh, very successful, very su successful, sorry. And uh, although we know it doesn't explain certain uh, phenomena, so it must uh, exist uh, some uh, beyond the standard model physics that we are not able to see still. This might be because uh, this new physics uh, gives a uh, too small uh, signal to be seen from us right now. Uh, this is due maybe because our experiments are too imprecise or because also our theoretical prediction has uh, too much uncertainty on it. A way to get a more precise result is to use uh, uh, scattering amplitudes, which are a powerful tool with respect to this. This is because they are at the core of the cross-sections that we are measuring in modern colliders. Other than that, uh, if we want to look in a different way to find out uh, new physics, we can look for gravitational wave physics in which, uh, again, the scattering amplitudes through a diagrammatical procedure uh, allows us to get uh, powerful and useful information. That being said, let me briefly review how uh, modern multi-loop uh, calculation is done. We know that scattering amplitude in perturbation theory are built upon many Feynman integrals. I'll, I defined uh, them here uh, as the integration of a d-dimensional momenta of uh, an integral which is done, uh, which is constituted by a set of denominators to an arbitrary power a. I will refer to them in this way. These are scalar uh, integrals. I won't deal with uh, the tensorial reduction, I, I will give that, that as understood. Now, if we want to achieve, to achieve high precision in our multi-loop amplitudes calculation, we need to move towards a higher loop in the calculation of the Feynman integrals. And as you can see from the picture here on the left-hand side, the number of integrals that we need to compute uh, at one loop for an amplitude greatly increase from the three-level uh, case. This quickly brings us into an enhancing of the complexity of the calculation. So for, just to give some quantitative information at two loop for x plus jet or three jet production, which are state of the art calculation, we may require even 10,000 integrals to be computed. Luckily, they are not all independent. There are so-called integration by parts identities, IBPs, that connect them. They are relations uh, that are controlled by the vanishing of a total derivative. For instance, here I put a really simple example where a three denominator integral is uh, written in terms of a two denominator one times a coefficient. In this way, we can reduce our uh, calculation of multi loop amplitudes to a smaller set of integrals, master integrals, as they are called. After this, one may want to compute them and uh, a greatly successful procedure is given by the differential equation in doing so. Basically, one can differentiate our master integral with respect to an external kinematical parameter, such as the Mandelstam invariance, S, and then one can reduce this new integral, thanks to IBPs, in terms of master integrals again. In this way, one quickly builds a differential equation system that one can solve then to get the value of the master integrals. As you can see, IDPs plays a central role in multi-loop uh, calculation nowadays, although they come with uh, some drawbacks. For instance, the number of equations grows dramatically as we go into higher loop examples, and uh, we start to have a large manipulation of uh, uh, grid expression, uh, intermediate expression, when actually maybe the coefficient of the final uh, 
reduction can be quite simple. This uh, makes IBPs also a possible um, bottleneck for multi loop calculation. Now, can't we uh, directly project our integral in terms of master integrals as we can do for a vector in terms of uh, their basis element? So, to avoid the solution of uh, the huge system? Actually, yes, we can. And uh, this is allowed thanks to twisted intersection theory, which is a mathematical branch developed in the 90s by a group of Japanese, such as Aomoto, Kita, and Matsumoto, and then applied to Feynman integrals, uh, firstly by Mastrolia and Mizera. For this, I will uh, switch to a, rep to a parametric representation, the Baikov representation. Here, we will use as uh, integration variable, uh, Z, uh, the denominators. The integral now changes shape and becomes uh, u times phi, where u is uh, the Jacobian of this change of variable, and it is a multivalued function constituted by a set of polynomial that vanishes on the boundary of the integration, whereas phi is a single valued form. Now we can ask ourselves, how does uh, IBPs uh, translate uh, into this language? How can we translate the total derivative we've seen before here? So if we take the total derivative of u times phi with uh, some algebraic uh, passages, we can rewrite it as u times nabla phi, where nabla is uh, an operator containing the differential plus the connection omega, which is given by u. This object clearly vanishes because of IBPs. And uh, so we can notice that if we take uh, an integral u times phi, if we add something that vanishes upon integration, the integral doesn't change. So we can add uh, this uh, nabla of psi, which is an arbitrary function. In some sense, uh, phi, the form phi, is equivalent to the form phi plus nabla psi. This uh, define a twisted cohomology group of forms. It might sound a bit wordy, although it comes with a lot of useful information. For instance, now, thanks to this uh, mathematical structure, we know how many independent functions are there, and we can easily compute them. For instance, we can find them by evaluating the number of uh, zeros of the connection omega. In the same way, we can uh, add to the contour uh, another piece uh, of uh, contour which uh, upon integration vanishes, uh, defining an, um, an equivalence class that brings us a twisted homology group. Just to summarize it up, if you have a form, an integrand, and you add an integral which vanishes under integration, uh, you get the same result. And this constitutes a cohomology co group. If you, get, you have instead an integral and you add to the contour a piece which uh, upon integration vanishes again, you get an equivalent integral, which defines our twisted homology group. Now, bringing the contour and the integral together, we can actually define our integral as a pairing between uh, the a cycle and the co-cycle, our forms. In the same way, we can define a dual uh, integral, which is uh, controlled by minus omega instead of omega. Now, going to the most important uh, object of my talk, the intersection number, uh, let me explain you how we can relate uh, two different integrals. Bringing two forms, which specifies our Feynman integral, we can integrate over them. So to define the intersection number. And uh, in this way, we have an object that uh, really naturally have IBPs built inside. And we will show, and I, we will see in short time how it is so. Let me remind you that uh, our form phi left and phi right uh, can be expressed in terms of uh, a set of master forms, uh, their independent one. And uh, then we can define one also for the dual basis, for the dual inter integrals. We can then build uh, a matrix of all the possible intersection number among all these objects. And this is useful because now we can observe that uh, phi left roughly is the sum over all uh, the basis element E, and phi, phi r is the sum over all the basis element H. 
so that you can see that this matrix here has entries that uh, depend on uh, one another, are linearly dependent on one another. So the determinant of such matrix must be zero. From this information, we can derive a key relation where we can express our form, our integral, in terms of our master integral times a coefficient for which now we have a closed formula. Now we are able to achieve the direct projection we were looking for and the intersection number allowed us to uh, uncover this vectorial structure where uh, we can think of our Feynman integrals as a vector and we can directly project it on uh, its uh, basis element. Now to go a little more into the detail, let me show you what is actually the intersection number and how we can compute it. In a very pedagogical way, we will start from a univariate case. In the univariate case, it is none other than the sum over all the pole of the connection omega of the residue of phi right, which is our input, times psi, which is uh, the solution of the non-homogeneous equation where phi left is the non-homogeneous term. Now, uh, one may inquire whether Evaluating psi is a difficult operation or not. Luckily, it turned out that it is much easier than what it seems because in the end, we only want to take the residue over these functions. So we need only local information on psi. Hence, if we Loran expand it and we plug it back in the residue, we will quickly notice that the higher power of the variable of integration tau will not contribute to the residue. We will be put to zero to the residue. So we can build a really a small ansatz, plug it inside the differential equation, and then match all the coefficients directly, uh, depending on the power that multiplying. Just as a little sanity check, you can also see that this object here, which should vanish in order for IBPs to be true, is actually zero. This is because in the end, in the intersection number, this thing here is none other than the residue over all the pole of a holomorphic function, and so it has to vanish. Now, just as a quick example, here I put a three loop uh, Feynman diagrams. Just for the moment, we will be restricted to the univariate case. Later on, we will see the more general one in the multivariate case. But uh, to go to the univariate representation of such integral, I have also to, let me tell, cut it, which, is a, which means to take the residue over some of the variable of, the, of integration. During this operation, we arrive to a univariate representation. We can compute then the number of master integrals, which are two. We can pick them as one and z. And then we can decide, for instance, to decompose z squared, just to check whether our algorithm is correct or not. We can compute all the intersection number required, plugging them back in the master decomposition formula, arriving finally to the coefficient of our reduction that we checked with modern IBP codes. Then we uh, went on and applied such a framework to a whole lot of examples that, uh, in which we were able to express Feynman integrals as univariate integrals. But we didn't uh, want to stop there. We wanted to go beyond and to uh, go to the multivariate case so that we can reduce any possible Feynman integrals in terms of master integrals. Now, uh, how can we link, uh, how can we reuse what we've seen for the univariate case in the multivariate one? Can we somewhat uh, link together univariate integral and multivariate integral? Actually, yes. And they are tied together by a really simple uh, operation, which is the integration. If we take an n variable integral and we integrate upon the n minus one in, uh, variables, we get an, uh, a one variable integrals. The integrand might, might change a bit, but we can always uh, recover its expression through calculation. Now, iteratively, in the same way, we can proceed one variable at a time with the integration so that we can do always a univariate integration to arrive to our multivariate result. Let me be very sketchy and uh, just to give you the idea. Analogously, we can do the same for the intersection number we can rewrite a multivariate intersection number as a set of univariate one. And this is done 
uh, through the algorithm that we proposed in our paper. So our goal is to compute the intersection number between multivariate forms. We give them as an input, then we compute the, all the connection required. Then we need to also add some information about the intermediate integration that we have to go through. Uh, so we have to require the number of independent uh, forms on each uh, layer, per each variable of integration, let's say. And we also have to uh, give uh, what are the independent functions of such layer. Then we can compute the intersection number among uh, the inner variable uh, uh, layer, which uh, have less variables. And uh, also the projection of a left and far right. We can uh, project also the connection on the last layer to finally compute it in uh, a formula which is a generalization of uh, the univariate case that I showed you. In this case, in fact, we are still summing over all the poles of capital omega uh, and we are doing the residue over psi, phi right, and also we have to add the information of all the intermediate uh, layer that uh, we've been through during our calculation. And this is done thanks to this uh, C matrix, which is none other than the intersection number in the previous layer. Again, psi is the solution of, the, of a differential equation uh, system. And uh, again, iteratively, we can uh, compute any multivariate intersection number. Now again, let me um, portray to you a small example, a two-variable one, very easy. Again, I will be going on the cut just to ease it for now. Then I will show you a complete reduction reproduced by us. So in this case, we have uh, the integral, which is a two-loop one, which is uh, expressed in terms of two variables. Per layer, it has always one master that we can pick. We can decide to reduce Z2 in terms of this function. And then we have to compute these two intersection number. Let me now portray to you in a more detailed way the computation for this intersection number. Given all the input required, then we can compute the intersection number in the first layer, which is a univariate intersection number, and we know how to do that. We can similarly project uh, our forms phi left and phi right in the outermost layer, and we compute, can compute also capital omega. Computing also the other intersection number, I can finally plug everything back inside uh, my, our master decomposition formula to obtain our reduction. Here, I put a quick example of a full reduction. This is to show that we can compute a, uh, even non-planar Feynman integrals. This is a two-loop case with uh, seven integration variables. It has all uh, th this set of uh, master integrals. And then uh, we can uh, quickly uh, recover all the coefficients going on different uh, cuts. We can define all the master per each uh, layer. We can uh, define them, compute all the intersection number required, and we can recover the final IBP. So to summarize it up very quickly and to give an outlook uh, to tell where we are looking for the future, intersection theory exposes the vectorial structure of Feynman integral and tells us why we can reduce them into a finite set of master. We, it gives us a direct way to compute the coefficient of the reduction and allows us also to get the differential equation directly. It is a topic of interest both for physicists and mathematicians, since it's a topic not well understood, neither from that side. In fact, there has been a very recent event in Padova, Mathematics 2019, where these two communities came together to work to understand better such useful uh, tool. For the future, uh, we would like to uh, look at some simplification that there could be uh, to evaluate the differential equation. We might want to apply uh, this uh, to different uh, representation. And also, we might wonder whether there is a, best, a better way to compute the intersection number. Finally, let me remark that it would be very interesting to investigate uh, quadratic relations among Feynman integrals, thanks to a tool given by intersection theory, which is the Riemann-twisted period relation. 
for further information, you can check uh, on the topic, you can check the material uh, of the conference that you can find at this link. That uh, being said, I think I will finish my talk uh, here. So thank you for your attention. Okay, thank you to, the, to Luca. There are questions or comments? Well, I have a question myself. Yes. Uh, all this relation uh, uh, that you found uh, uh, also in the massless theory or they are valid uh, no matter which are the masses uh, of the internal uh, particles? They are valid no matter which are the masses of internal and external particle without any problem. Yes, we have many examples in which it works. Okay, thank you very much. There are other questions or comments? Sorry, I might miss a point. How you deal with the divergences of the Feynman diagram? Well, uh, the divergences of uh, Feynman diagrams are uh, when we, for instance, specialize in uh, d equal four. Now we are doing everything in d dimension generally. So we can write our Feynman diagrams uh, in, um, with the coefficient with contains d and it might contain some divergences in the equal four, as you can see in this example, for instance. So you are manipulating essentially symbolically this expression. Yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay.